Hey guys, today we have another little project. You may think, oh, this is too young for me, but I thought it would be a fun way to review what we talked about last week about Esther. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to the book of Esther. Remember, it's the last of the 12 books of history, and so it's found in the Old Testament. It's really just a couple of books before the book of Psalms, but you can use your table of contents. But while you're doing that, I wanted to show you what we're gonna be using to review our story. These are little finger puppets. So I've got a sheet and I send it to your mom and dad. If they have a way to print them off, you can, and then you can color them in and you can review the story later if you want to. Maybe even you can teach it to a little brother or sister or cousin or someone. So it comes like this and you can color it and cut it out. And then these two little strips, you just pull them together, put a piece of scotch tape on it, and then you have a little finger puppet. So here's Esther, and she's the one we're talking about. Remember last week, we talked about how she became queen. Let's go back to chapter two, and we're gonna read the last verse we did last week, so we can kind of remember what we talked about last week. So go to chapter two, verse 17. And there it says, and the king loved Esther more than any of the other young women. He was so delighted with her that he set the royal crown on her head and declared her queen instead of Vashti. Now to celebrate the occasion, he gave a great banquet in Esther's honor for all his nobles and officials, declaring a public holiday for the provinces and giving generous gifts to everyone. Even after all the young women had been transferred to the second harem and Mordecai had become a palace official, Esther continued to keep her family background and nationality a secret. She was still following Mordecai's directions just as she did when she lived in his home. And we talked about last week how not only Esther was beautiful, but she had a beautiful inside too. Her character was good. She was kind, she trusted Mordecai, and she was obedient. And we talked about how that prepared her to trust God. And today, a lot of the lesson, you're gonna know the story of Esther and how she rescues her people and she becomes a hero or a heroine. But I want us to look a little bit deeper today because God wor God's word always teaches us something new and it always has something to teach us for right where we are in our own lives. So let's review our characters. So far, we know we have Queen Esther. But before Esther was on the scene, we had King Xerxes, or Hazurus. And remember, his queen, Vashti. And he gave the great party, and he wanted to show off his beautiful queen. And she said no. She did not want to come, and she disobeyed. So he banished her where she could never come before the king and in his presence again. She's gone. Then we were introduced to not only Esther, but also her cousin Mordecai. Remember, Esther was an orphan. Both her parents had died, but Mordecai took care of her. And even when she was there during the 12 months of beauty treatments, Mordecai went by every day to check on her. So we have Mordecai and Esther. And today we're going to meet somebody new. Haman. And if you remember, Haman is the bad guy. He is the villain of our story today. So let's jump in and read a little bit more about what happened to Esther after she became queen. We know that she continued obeying Mordecai and keeping her nationality. Remember, she was Jewish, but she was living in a foreign land. It was used to be Babylon. They were taken into captivity. Now it's Persia. So she and Mordecai are Jewish, and they're living in the foreign land. Esther is now queen. Let's see what happens next. We're going to go down to chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 5 and 6. So let me find it. It says, when Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, he was filled with rage 
he had learned of Mordecai's nationality. So he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Jews throughout the entire empire of King Xerxes or Hazurus. So here we have Haman on the scene. Now, before Haman was there, Queen Esther was queen. And let me find the right one. Mordecai. He was sitting by the gates of the city and he overheard some people saying that they were going to kill the king. So Mordecai sent word to Esther and Esther told the king and the king's life was saved. And that was recorded in a book the king kept about his reign that Mordecai the Jew had helped save his life. But he still didn't know that Esther was Jewish. So he appointed Haman as one of his very top officials. He had a lot of power and Haman also was very prideful and he also had an evil heart. So here, what we just read was that Haman would walk out very proud and want everyone to bow down to him. But Mordecai refused, even though the king had said everybody should bow down to Haman. Mordecai refused to bow down to him and Haman was angry. Can't you tell he has a very angry face? So he was very angry and he started trying to figure out a plan how to not only kill Mordecai, who he knew was Jewish, but also all the Jewish people in the land. And so that takes us to the heart of this story. And we're going to read, I want you to go down to chapter four and we're going to read quite a few verses. I'm going to read chapter one, uh, not chapter, chapter 14, sorry, chapter four, verses one through 14. So we can get the whole story from God's word. Um, I also want to make sure we understand that if we look back where we just read in chapter three, verses five and six, this is about seven years later. So it's not like right after you would think, oh, these, they're just, it's a short book. So it happens so quickly, but there's a lot of time that takes place during the book of Esther. And so seven years have passed since Esther was made queen. So to chapter four, verse one. When Mordecai learned about all that had been done, about the plan that Haman had made to kill the people, all the Jewish people of the land, he tore his clothes, put on burlap and ashes, and went out into the city crying with a loud and bitter wail. He was brokenhearted for his people. Verse two, he went as far as the gate of the palace, for no one was allowed to enter the palace gate while wearing clothes of mourning. And as the news of the king's decree, which would have said that all the Jewish people could be killed on a certain day, as the king's decree reached all the provinces, there was a great mourning among the Jews. They fasted, wept, and wailed, and many people lay in burlap and ashes. When Queen Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her about Mordecai, she was deeply distressed. She sent clothing to him to replace the burlap, but he refused it. See her kind heart? I love that. Then Esther sent for Hathach, one of the king's eunuchs who had been appointed as her attendant. She ordered him to go to Mordecai and find out what was troubling him and why he was in mourning. Verse 6, so Hathach went out to Mordecai in the square in front of the palace gate. Mordecai told him the whole story, including the exact amount of money that Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai, Mordecai gave Hathach a copy of the decree issued in Susa that called for the death of all Jews. He asked Hathach to show it to Esther and explain the situation to her. He also asked Hathach to direct her to go to the king to beg for mercy and plead for her people. So Hathach returned to Esther with Mordecai's message. Then Esther told Hathach to go back and relay this message to Mordecai. All the king's officials and even the people in the provinces know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court 
without being invited is, do is doomed to die unless the king holds out his gold scepter. And the king has not called for me to come to him for 30 days. So Hathak gave Esther's message to Mordecai. Do you sense she's a little afraid to go to the king because she could be killed? Verse 13. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. In verse 14 is probably the most familiar verse in the whole book of Esther. So read along with me. Verse 14. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just a time as this. I love that. You know, last week we talked about trusting God's plan. And Esther not only trusted Mordecai and learned how to trust God in God's plan for her to become queen, but also, also now, Esther's going to have to learn to trust God's plan that may risk her own life. Let me read a little bit more, just kind of sum up what I um, have read so far. It says, in fact, I'll use our puppets. How about that? See if I can keep them straight. Now, Esther was queen, and you'd think that was a fairy tale ending. They all lived happily ever after. Not yet, though, for there was a wicked man named Haman. After Esther became queen, there were those of the kingdom that planned to kill the king. Mordecai, remember I told you this part, overheard their scheme and told Esther who told the king and they were able to save his life. Soon after the king promoted a man named Haman. Don't forget, this is where he comes on the scene to a position of power. The king was not aware of Haman's wicked heart. Haman was proud and did not like Mordecai because Mordecai would not bow down to him. And that's kind of what we read back in chapter three. Well, Mordecai, what we just read, sent word to Esther that she must speak to the king in defense of the Jewish people. And that sounds like a very simple thing, but remember what she said? Anyone that comes to the king's inner chamber without being invited could be killed. So Queen Esther, we've talked about her character. Not only was she kind, she reached out and tried to help Mordecai. Not only was she obedient in obeying Mordecai and others that were in authority over her, she was wise. Because the next thing we see her do and I'm going to read a summary. We see her risk her life for others. She becomes a heroine. So Queen Esther was wise. She trusted Mordecai. There he is. And ultimately, Esther trusted God. She sent word for all the Jews in the land to fast and pray. She also fasted and prayed. And then she risked her life to save the lives of many. That's what made her a heroine, or that's female, her hero. She put others before herself. And we can do that each and every day as we trust God and trust his plan for our life. She also was wise that she did not immediately accuse Haman. Sorry, I wrote it down as a story, so I'm trying to read it, too, so I get it all in. Um, yes, there we go. The remaining chapters of the book of Esther tell us she invited Haman. Here he is. Oh, nope, that's Mordecai. Hang on. Haman and the king. There we go. Esther invited Haman and the king to a banquet. And the king said, oh, Esther... If there's anything you want, I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Well, all Esther asked for was for Haman and the king to come to a second 
banquet. And so Esther prepared a banquet, a second one for them. Um, Haman proudly came, but he didn't realize that his plan to have Mordecai and the, G the Jews put to death would also kill Queen Esther. Because remember, neither Haman nor the king know that Esther is Jewish too. So when they come to the second banquet, the king again says, Esther, anything up to half my kingdom, I would be glad to give to you because I love you. Well, Esther said, O oh, king, if you would just spare the lives of all the Jewish people and my own life, that is what I would ask. Well, the king was confused a little and asked, who has planned such a thing to kill my queen and all the Jewish people? And then Esther said, Haman has. Well, the king was so angry, he left the room. And Haman begged Queen Esther for his life. The king got even angrier. And so on that day, instead of Mordecai being put to death, Haman was put to death. And the king couldn't retract the law, the decree that he had put for all the Jewish people to be killed on a certain day the next year. But he could make a new law where all the Jewish people could defend themselves. And so that's what happened. Queen Esther risked her own life. Does that sound familiar to you? You know, we talked last week about how we're orphans without God as our father. But when we ask Jesus to come into our heart and life, we become princesses and princes because we're children of the king. And then looking at today with Queen Esther risking her life to save her people, isn't that exactly what King Jesus did for all of us? He loved us. And he put himself, <clears throat> sorry, he put our lives above his own and gave his life for us that we might live and become children of the king. And in that, we can see his great love. And then Jesus is the greatest hero that has ever lived. So the next year, when the Jews were supposed to be all killed and destroyed, they weren't because we can remember God is able. God's got this. When hard times come, we can remember even stories like this. That's not a fairy tale. It's a true story where God came through and he took care of his people. He took care of Esther. He had plans for her and plans for them. So I want us to finish up towards the end. Go to chapter 9 and go down to verse 30. Now, Mordecai pretty much took over Haman's position after Haman died. He was very highly honored by the king. And so he wrote some letters, and Queen Esther also wrote some letters. And let's see what these letters were about in chapter 9, verse 30. It says, Letters wishing peace and security were sent to the Jews throughout the 127 provinces of the empire of Xerxes. This was after the Jews lived through that day. They were able to defend themselves. And verse 31 says, These letters established the festival of Purim, an annual celebration of these days at the appointed time. Remember, Mordecai had told Esther, What if it, you were born for such a time as this? Or made queen for such a time as this? Um, at the appointed time, decreed by both Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther. And this is a festival that the Jewish people still celebrate, remembering how God used Esther to deliver the people, to rescue them. But remember, ultimately, it wasn't Esther. It was God who rescued them. And God continues to rescue those that turn to him. There are a few things that I want us to remember from the life of Esther and from the book of Esther. I kind of wrote them down so I would get them right. Um, by putting the lives of others before her own, Esther became a heroine or a hero. 
It wasn't her beauty on the outside that God used, though. It was her obedient and wise character on the inside. Esther trusted God even when she did not understand his plan. She went to him in prayer instead of following her own plans first. A hero is not immune to fear. In spite of fear, a hero does what needs to be done for the sake of others. Jesus, remember, is the ultimate hero. God uses ordinary people like an orphan named Hadassah in extraordinary ways when they trust him. When we trust him, he will use us. God has plans for each of our lives. The ultimate plan, I remember, is what I told you, is to become children of the King by trusting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The memory verse this week is in Psalms. So go a couple of books over to Psalm 27, and we're going to look at verse 1. I'll give you just a second to turn there, because you'll have Esther and then Job and the book of Psalms. So 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Such a great verse to remember that when things get hard, when we don't know what the future may hold, we can remember God's got this. We can trust him. So I hope you'll hide some of these words in your heart. I hope you'll spend time this week reading through, even if you want to go back and read through um, the book of Esther again. And I will see you next week.